Hey, what's up, earthlings and life beings? It's Rod D and my homeboy DJ Orange Ninja on the ones and twos doing how he do, bringing those hot beats and sound effects to you. And this dynamic duo is known as Orange Ninja News. Yeah. Now, it's about that time. Let's get to the news. All right, so I got a little time today, so I'm going to be able to get into the Georgia guy stones and we're going to take a deep dive with this one um, and we'll look at uh, what type of explosives probably been used uh, what the people was thinking that knocked it down how many people it probably was and I mean just uh, we'll look at all the facts and figures and everything you know it's not going to just be putting out old uh, you know how how we feel about this or that, but actual facts and figures, and stuff that was going on, and uh, yeah. So without further ado, I'ma dive into the story. All right, so they had earlier had a report just not long ago. Um, it was buzzing on Facebook saying that they had caught the guy that uh, knocked down the Georgia Guidestones and right then when they said they caught the guy I knew that was capped because uh, the type of explosives that was used it would have took more than one to carry it because it would be heavy and I'm going to get into that a little bit later uh, but yeah so that story ended up being capped um, so they got a, a new story on USA Today, and it says the claim news story reported schizophrenic man was convicted in Georgia Guidestones bombing. And since the intentional bombing of Georgia Guidestones on July 6, misinformation surrounding the incident has spread online. A July 19th. A uh, Facebook post presents a screenshot of a supposed news story claiming a schizophrenic man was convicted for the bombing. The post occurred more than 100 shares in a week. And it says, schizophrenic man convicted over blowing up the Georgia Guidestone. The headline in the post reads, and the screenshot attributes the story to Associated Press and the Daily Mail though the Daily Mail name is styled incorrectly. But the headline is not real. According to Associate Press and the Daily Mail spokespeople, they both said that, uh, yeah, that's not us. Uh, we don't have nothing to do with this. And no arrest has been made in the case according to a Georgia Bureau of Investigation spokesperson. So, yeah. And, let's see, uh, and it says the story was not published on the Associated Press website or the Daily Mail's website. It also does not appear on Associated Press Twitter or Daily Mail's Twitter. And let's see. It says the man pictured in a fabricated news story is YouTuber Luke Smith, which is, uh, you know, that's crazy, man. So somebody threw this, uh, fake news story on Facebook just you know trolling and stuff and the fact that they would put a picture of the YouTuber Luke Smith on there eh, come on man that's just yo that's ridiculous basically the YouTuber Luke Smith could have had a hater out there that wanted to troll him and you know he was like yo I say he was a schizophrenic man that uh, blew up the Georgia Guidestones man that's dude that's just crazy but uh, yeah, so that's a, a fake story, and I don't know who the YouTuber Luke Smith is, but whoever you are, buddy, I would uh, um, look into whoever is uh, running your name like that, you know what I'm saying, and putting your picture out there, messing off with you, uh, trolling you, man, take some kind of actions on that one, that's, that's ridiculous, man, putting you out there like that, it's crazy, man. People be going too far with the trolling thing, man, for real. That's just ridiculous. 
All right, and being that I'm originally from Georgia, I feel some kind of way about the Georgia Gastones for the simple fact that it was bringing in 20,000 tourists per year on the estimate. And you got to think, 20,000 tourists a year to that area of Alberton, Georgia, uh, you know, that helps out their local economy. The restaurants, you know, people are going to have to eat that's traveling. The tourists are going to have to sleep. So that's tourist dollars going into the motels there. So at a time where they can have uh, peak tourist season for the somebody to blow up the place is very inconsiderate, you know what I'm saying? It was like, uh, damn the, uh, the town and the local workers that work at the restaurants and motels and other places that's frequented by the tourists, you know, they taking those dollars from them. What are they replacing it with? Which is nothing. They're, they're not going to go and pay these places and make sure they they are uh, able to keep the doors open now that they took all their, uh, their potential money away from them. And by taking away the tourism, that's, you know what I'm saying, that's just very inconsiderate. All right, now, like I said, uh, by the end of this, we'll be going into uh, more about the suspects and stuff and why the investigators believe that's definitely, you know, it was more than just one person. And I'll tell you why I believe that was more than one person. And uh, talk about the footage that they caught from the security camera, etc. We, we'll get into all of that by the end of this. But now, let's play some homage to the Georgia Godstones. And let's talk about uh, with all the, uh, everything about the Georgia Godstones from the beginning to the end. Yeah. And you could go to uh, the New Georgia Encyclopedia. If you pull up the New Georgia Encyclopedia, it has everything about the Georgia Guidestones on there. You just uh, go to that, punch in Georgia Guidestones, and all the info will come up. And that's on uh, the New Georgia Encyclopedia. And it says, uh, from 1980 until its destruction in 2022. So. Uh, check that out 1980 to 2022 that's only 42 years right there so I mean the, the thing was only 42 years old and it was erected uh, with the purpose of being around for the the, the next great reset which uh, basically is whenever if something was that happened to the earth, you know, we always got asteroids up there floating around. Uh, we got meteors, uh, you know, if we have another great war, like uh, World War II was our last great war where millions of people died. You know, it's, it depends on, uh, you know, so many different variables and so many, uh, different things that could cause the next great reset and when I say a uh, great reset that's just uh, basically uh, the earth every uh, I see one theory that it was like every 26,000 years the earth would have a great reset and uh, there's other theories that it'd be within a million or something like that but Basically, it's just basically something major happening to the earth so that the uh, uh, population of people will dwindle all the way down and we have to, when we come out the rubble, start to rebuild. So, when you're talking about a great earth reset, basically uh, the time where an asteroid had hit the earth and took out the dinosaurs, that was one great reset. Uh, the Great Flood, that was a reset, and uh, scientists have proved that there actually was a flood, and all the cultures around the world all have, uh, in their ancient times, all the uh, cultures have uh, 
talked about uh, there was a great uh, flood. And then, of course, we had uh, World War One and World War Two. But all those are uh, considered as a great reset when it comes to uh, to the Earth and, you know, population and everything like that. Okay, now, so if anything was to happen, man would have came back out of the rubble and then... Boom, you got the Georgia guy stone sitting there and the guy can uh, read it because it was in all the different Earth's languages and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically what the thinking of the whole thing was. It was supposed to last a long time, basically. 42 years was not, but, you know, who wants to go through it? all that work, all that time, put in all the money and energy for something that's only going to last for 42 years? Of course... That is not how this was supposed to go. So, I mean, that's just ridiculous, man. It makes no sense. Uh, it's basically was supposed to be around just like Stonehenge has been around. Stonehenge in England. Uh, it's basically the same setup like the Georgia guy stones. And that's how it's been on the earth for thousands of years. So, you know what I'm saying? Come on. Couldn't even last 42 damn years in Georgia. Why in England, it's been around thousands of years. Come on, man. <laughs> That's just ridiculous, man. Yeah, you know, we, we have to do better over here in the States, man. All right. So, yeah, so that was from 1980 until its destruction in 2022, which I already said. That's not but a short 42 years. Okay, so one of the most intriguing and controversial granite monuments ever erected stood in Albert County near the South Carolina border. The Georgia Guidestones dominated the highest elevation in the county, which is located in the northeastern Piedmont section of the state, known to some as the American Stonehenge because of their striking resemblance to England's famous monument. The Georgia Guidestones were unveiled on March 22, 1980. Like ancient Stonehenge, the modern Guidestone served as a celestial clock of sorts, recording the passage of time through special features. Unlike Stonehenge, however, the Guidestones contain a written message for humanity. The general layouts of the two sites also differ from one another. While Stonehenge is arranged in a circular manner, the Guidestones were positioned in an X pattern with each line of the axis oriented towards specific areas of the moon's annual rotation around the earth and uh the, the difference with the writing is a real big thing because uh stonehenge in england yeah that's a, a real beautiful uh tourist attraction and you know it's known throughout the world and all types of scientists have been there tourists flock there every year and uh but it leaves a lot to the imagination because there is no writings. Unlike, uh, unlike the um, Stonehenge, where you had writings in different languages. Not just writings, but in all different languages. So whoever the visitors are still can uh, read in their own language. Okay? So, yeah, let, let me keep it pushing. The guy stones. Mysterious origins go back to the summer of 1979 when a man calling himself R.C. Christian came to Everton in search of both granite firm to execute his design for a monument and a suitable site for the construction of it. The man admitted that Christian was a pseudonym chosen because it represented his own beliefs and those of the organization that planned and funded the project. So, basically, he said the reason he called himself R.C. Christian because he's a Christian, you know, it, uh, you know, he's of the Christian faith, which, okay, right there, that blows a big hole into the whole conspiracy theory, guys, that's talking about the Georgia guy stones was satanic. If they was... Uh, satanic and some devil worship stuff then it wouldn't be erected by a Christian in the first place I mean you can't have both dude I mean those uh, 
conspiracy theorists, guys, they just be running with just, I don't know, man. They just, they, they irk me with, <laughs> with that type of stuff. It's like, come on, man. <sighs> anyway, uh, back. Yeah, let's get back into it. Okay, to this day, Christian's real name and the true identity of his organization are unknown. Christian claimed that he chose Everett County because of its abundant supply of granite, the rural nature of its landscape and its relatively mild climate and because some of the ancestors had once lived in the region. Joe H. Finley, senior president of the Everton Granite Finishing Company, was initially shocked when Christian first explained his plan to build a gigantic granite monument inscribed with wisdom for the ages, suggestion, or directions that would lead humanity into an age of reason. And that age of reason, man, that's, uh, you know, what the conspiracy theorist was thinking was, uh, the New World Order, but uh, the originators of the monument, they wasn't thinking of New World Order. They were thinking way off in the future that something was to happen and there was another great reset, say thousands of years from now, whatever, or whenever a great reset was to occur and we came and pulled ourselves back out of the rubble, you know what I'm saying? We're, uh, you can read the Georgia Guidestone and it's saying, hey, let's be thinking people, reasoning people, you know, moving intelligence, you know, don't get into the anarchy and, you know, just going wild and doing whatever, you know, let's be intelligent about stuff this time around, basically, you know. So, uh, let's see, Christian also informed YSC Martin, President of Granite City Bank of his hope that other conservation-minded groups in the country would later erect even more stones to form an outer ring around the central structure. He told Martin that he wanted the monument to be erected in a rural area away from the crowds and tourists. Meanwhile, Finley put his laborers to work on the structure, which consisted of four massive blue granite slabs, one center stone, known as the Noman Stone, and a capstone. When finally completed, the monolithic structure weighed 119 tons and contained 951 cubic feet of granite. The structure also supported more than 4,000 sandblasted characters and letters, each averaging about 4 inches in height. Christian and Martin selected a 5-acre plot in the middle of a cow pasture approximately seven miles north of Everton and eight miles south of Hartwell, with a commanding view of the east and the west on which to build the monument. The area chosen was in close proximity to what the Cherokee Indians call Ayali Elohi, the center of the world. The land on which the Gaston stood is owned by Elbert County. The inscriptions on the Gastones were meant for current and future generations, sandblastic alone, the square capstone setting atop the structure was the basic message that these be the guidestones to an age of reason. And like I was saying, an age of reason, an age of thinking, basically, a big, trying to be intelligent about things, you know, not wilding out. Okay. Now, it was in ancient, uh, Ancient languages such as they got Babylon, uh, Babylonian, Egyptian, Sanskrit, and classical Greek. And then you know they also had the uh, those are the the ancient languages that they had on there. And then they had all of uh, modern day language that we speak today. The four granite slabs each weighing forty two. 42,137 pounds and standing more than 16 feet in height listed 10 guides for mankind in 8 different languages. The languages represented on the four major stones were Arabic, Chinese, English, Hebrew, Hindi, Russian, Spanish, and Swahili. So basically all the major languages we speak on the earth right now. The engraved message dealt with four major areas, governance, 
and the establishment of a world government population and reproduction control, the environment and humankind's relationship to nature and spirituality. While some of the guys were self-explanatory, others were open to discussion and interpretation. And that's the thing, it, because it's the same, you know, it was just basically a big piece of artwork, you know, and that's all uh, like a statue or a major structure like that. It's just artwork. It's, it's open for interpretation. One person looks at the painting of Mona Lisa and thinks it's a beautiful picture of a beautiful lady. Another guy look at it, uh, she was probably all right for her time. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's open to interpretation. A conspiracy theory guy probably would come along and say, I bet she was one of those lizard people. You know, uh, it's open for interpretation, man. And unfortunately, some crazies interpret wrong. Their interpretation was let me blow this thing up. Ain't that ridiculous, man? Yeah. So uh, the rich, the rich variety of interpretations evoked by the Guidestone Cup caused much controversy and debate to swirl around the hidden or intended meanings of the messages. The monument had been vandalized several times before its destruction and was the subject of various conspiracy theories, particularly those concerned with the prescriptions of population control and internationalism. According to the Guidestones, the following 10 principles could ensure humankind's future survival. Okay, now here's the, uh, here's the, the, the 10 different uh, principles on there and I break them down uh, per each one. Okay, number one, it said, maintain humanity under 500, mi 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Now, for uh, the conspiracy theory people that was thinking that that means, yeah, we got billions of people on Earth right now, so to get it down to 500 million, that means take a lot of people out. No, that's not what it means. Again, this is meant to be read after the Great Reset, whenever we start over. Okay, so already there wouldn't be a lot of humans. You know what I'm saying? There would be a lot of us left. Something happened. We're trying to rebuild. We're trying to start over, dude. So that, I mean, I don't know where they got that crazy interpretation of saying that's what we're going to take humans down to. I mean, dude, we got asteroids and meteors in, a, in space that scientists are uh, looking at all day. Just, we know it's a matter of time, dude. I mean, anyway, so now let's go to number two. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Number three, unite humanity with a new language. Again, why would you need to unite humanity with a new language? Well, because something happened to the planet and we went them down and there's so little of us left now that, you know, we come, uh, crawling out of our bunkers and caves and whatnot and everybody's talking with their different slangs and uh, different dialects from uh, whatever area they was in and we have to start all over. So that's why we would have to unite humanity again. We'd be too fractured. And so we have to uh, learn to speak with each other again. Okay, number four. Rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with temperate reason. Basically, try to be thinking people, you know. Try to be a thinking man, thinking woman, you know what I'm saying. Number five, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. In other words, not a bunch of anarchy and just doing whatever, but actually, you know, have actual fair laws and actually, uh, you know, uh, treat each other right don't just be unto a bunch of lawless stuff you know what I'm saying number six let all nations rule internally resolving external disputes in a world court uh, kind of do that now 
Uh, number seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Number eight, balance personal rights with social duties, which is basically, you know what I'm saying, uh, don't be me, 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 and all about me, but, you know, kind of put the group ahead of uh, just uh, personal gain all the time. All right, uh, prize, truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite, you know, that's awesome. Spiritual, you know. Number 10, be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature, leave room for nature. Okay, uh, leave room for nature basically means, you know, don't be out here just killing animals for fun. You know, if you if you out hunting for food, that's one thing. But if you just out just shooting and killing animals just to be doing it, uh, you know, that kind of goes against nature. Uh, that's common sense there. All right, and that's the 10 different principles that was on there, which I don't see why that would make somebody flip out or something man. that's yeah so okay now the astronomical phenomena were also associated with the gas stones the four large upright granite slabs that composed the face of the structure were oriented to the limits of the moon's migration during the course of the year an eye level oblique hole drilled in the known stone looked upward toward the celestial heavens the origin on Polaris, the North Star, in the middle of the known stone was a large slot, large slot with a hole cut through the granite, orienting the monument with summer and winter solstice. The guy stones also acted as an enormous sundown. Drilled through the capstone was a seven eighths inch hole, which allowed sunlight to shine on the southern face of the Noman stone at noon. Yeah, and that's what I was saying about the, uh, in the middle of it, uh, you look up at night and you see the moon perfectly through that hole. And then later on in the day, at the right time, the sunlight shines through that hole. So it was, uh, you know, it was lined up with the sky. Like they said, it was also a sundown. And you know the sundown you can uh, tell time and what time of day and stuff like that the controversy surrounding the gas stones came to a head in 2022 in, in may republican candidate for governor candace taylor deemed the site satanic satanic and vowed to destroy it via executive order if elected Subsequent attention on social media renewed interest in the Godstone among evangelical Christians and fringe conspiracy theorists. And I think it's kind of ironic when you had uh, some Christian groups calling it satanic when it was actually put up by a Christian group. You know? <laughs> Ah, uh, that's crazy. A Christian group put it up, but another Christian group called it satanic. Huh? How does that work? Okay. In the early morning hours of July 6, 2022, an explosion destroyed part of the monument. Local and state police discovered evidence of a bomb at the scene and released camera footage of the detonation. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation demolished the gas stones later that day citing concerns for public safety. The investigation remains ongoing. The Elberton Granite Museum in Elberton offers an impressive display model of the gas stones as well as a short film detailing its construction. The museum also provides free informational brochures about the gas stones and their creation. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, it's still it's still a ongoing investigation. They're still looking for the guys, and they always uh, have it noted that they're looking for those responsible. You know, like they they never uh, 
refer to it as being just one person. They think it's more than one person. Now I'm gonna get into that why they uh, think it's more than one person. All right, now the the explosion, which they uh, they have footage of, like they say they got it, footage of the explosion, and um, you can even uh, look it up. And you can pull it up and watch it yourself. But you know, of course, it, at the time of the explosion that was caught on security camera you don't see nobody around there so basically uh they use some kind of time device to make the explosion now if somebody was around at the time of course they'd be closing the case now you know what i'm saying they could have got some footage of some people and or vehicles that they might have been in and stuff like that but you know it's still an ongoing investigation um now, uh, the reason why they uh, they already know is more than one person is because the explosives that would have been used. Now, you would have to think, what kind of explosives can you get? If you get a uh, military-grade explosives, it would be smaller, say like C4 or something like that. You know, you have something small. Uh, if you have dynamite, you know what I'm saying? You can, uh, it could be one person, but the type of explosives was obviously the uh, fertilizer style explosives, and that's why they would think that it's more than one person because when you're using that type of explosive, it's going to be real heavy because it takes a, a lot of fertilizer. So you're going to have, like, yeah guys carrying big 100 pound bags you know what i'm saying so it's not going to be one guy by itself it it would be impossible you know what i'm saying to quickly do it and quickly get away so that's just basic common sense why they keep referring it as suspects and those responsible etc so uh yeah uh common sense already tell them it's more than one that that right there was a dead giveaway now Let's get into a uh, whole uh, thing about the area that it's in. The place that the Georgia guy stones in, uh, Everton, Georgia, it is 109.7 miles northeast of Atlanta, Georgia. So, uh, if you go on I-85 North, and you take that for a 109.7 miles, bam, you'll be right there. Um, that would be pretty far for somebody to travel for a group of guys to hop in a van or something like that. You just committed a crime. You got adrenaline flowing. You're nervous. You're scared. Mm, the likelihood of somebody uh, driving that far after committing a crime like that, especially something that... Uh, involves an explosion because as soon as you uh bring the whole bombing thing into it um yeah you're gonna have fbi and groups like that looking for you man it, it's not gonna be a, a small crime to them man. anytime you doing explosive stuff uh yeah yeah you just cross a very big line right there i mean you're gonna have the majors looking for you it ain't gonna be small time and so the likelihood that they would uh go all the way on a two-hour drive after that is very low now it's closer to anderson south carolina to the georgia guy stones that's only a 26 minute drive because that's only 26 miles away from uh where the georgia guy stones was located okay now, is uh, of course, it's more likely that the suspects, like I say, they already nervous, they already scared. It's more likely that they just go ahead and drive. Up. I mean, so you can rest assured that they already are uh, checking in to flights leaving out of the airport in Anderson and car rentals, etc. 
because it will only make sense that you got a small group of guys that's going out to commit this crime that uh, involves uh, explosives, which uh, as soon as the bombing go off, you got AB, uh, you got the FBI, you got the ATF, the you know, which is the alcohol, tobacco, firearms. Uh, those guys, anything they got to do with uh, people setting off explosives, they they there. They they're gonna have boots on ground and really uh, doing their due diligence. So yeah, I mean, only 26 miles to Anderson, a major city. Uh, that that that's the area that they would definitely want to check out as far as uh, the flights, car rentals, etc. All right, um, let's see. Uh, as far as how do how, how do uh, you get some fertilizer over to that area without detection and stuff like that? Yeah, you're looking at uh, you're looking at vans, uh, pickup trucks. Uh, did somebody? rent a u-haul or something like that okay now as far as access to fertilizer when we look at the area of Everton county where this took place um matter of fact the street name is the is the um georgia guy stone road or georgia guy stone way or something like that but yeah the name of the street is even georgia uh georgia guy road so I mean, it's like out in the middle of nowhere, and the only thing around it is like these big major farms. Like, it's just the only thing in the surrounding area is farmland. Now, you say farmland, boom, there you go, farm equipment. Fertilizer is part of farm equipment. So, it wouldn't be too far fetched to think that the fertilizer came from within that area somewhere so they would have to also look at uh um the farm supply sellers around there and see who bought a crap load of fertilizer that either don't own a farm in the area or can't account for that amount of uh fertilizer like they bought a large amount and then all of a sudden that large amount uh disappeared you know what i'm saying so, but, um, yeah, when you, when you look at the area that it's in, man, it's like nothing around except for farmland. So, yeah, that, that also, uh, that's a, another way that, the uh, suspects quickly got a hold of the fertilizer. Because you're already in farmland and they're selling it all day as it is. So, that wasn't, uh, too hard for them to get their hands on. And... Yo, so with us knowing all this about it, you know, of course the authorities, they being new and they're on the case, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that they uh, bring the suspects to justice because, again, you got to think, that was really, uh, that was really inconsiderate of them towards the local people that live in the area as far as tourism-wise, man. Like they say, it's over 20,000 people a year. Man, 20,000 people uh, in tourist dollars? Come on, man. You're talking about the restaurants, the motels, like I say, man. That's going to take a real big hit. They're going to have to lay people off and stuff like that. I mean, that's, man. Again, that's some of that me, me, me type of thinking and being inconsiderate. Damn, whoever else you know uh and whoever gets hurt in the process not to mention if you got people going around blowing stuff up uh, what if next time it's a building that got people in it you know what I'm saying? uh come on man when people start doing stuff like that blowing buildings and blowing statues and everything up uh, it, it leads down a real a real dark road man if they're not caught at least get a slap on the wrist or learn something from 
their bad behavior, it just increases and becomes worse and worse until today is this, the next day, hmm, who knows, you know what I'm saying? That's not cool. They definitely need to uh, uh, find some people to hold accountable for this, man. That's ridiculous. All right. So, yeah, so that's basically everything about the Georgia Guidestones that we know um, all the way up to date. And in the future, uh, if they, um, you know, get anybody on it and, you know, bring anybody to justice, I definitely uh, do a video about that and we'll do a recap and, you know, bring. But as far as right now, that's uh, everything that we have on it. So, yeah, and with that, as I usually say about this time, y'all be good to each other, be blessed, and peace.